Hello everyone and let me welcome you to the Light of Knowledge. Today we are having a very special guest, Sister Jayanti, an overseas coordinator of Brahma Kumaris University. She's been with this university since her childhood and she is very spiritual and she knows everything about it. And today we are going to bring a very special topic how to adjust spirituality in our regular life. And we will address all those interesting questions to Sister Jayanti. Sister Jayanti, welcome to our studio. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Today we are talking about spirituality in our real life, in our regular life. Uh, many people are really interested in how to uplift uh, they are living and how not to harm each other and now not how not to hurt each other so and I think that spirituality uh, has lots of answers to even regular everyday questions of um, every human being so what do you think of that uh, certainly for my own life I would say that spirituality first of all gave me a very, very powerful answer about the direction that I wanted my life to go in because I had many choices but not enough wisdom with which to be able to make my choice. And they say that that is a big factor of stress today. Many choices but we lack the wisdom. But spirituality was able to show me what it is I needed to do for myself and as a result of that, what it is I could contribute to the bigger world also around me. So I know that spirituality really was able to answer all the different questions that I had at that time, many, many years ago, but also it answered questions that I hadn't yet still articulated for myself. And so it was um, a new door that opened and changed my life completely. And how can we define spirituality? So how can, for example, a regular person um, from the outer world understand that, okay, so this is a spiritual, for example, advice or a way of living, and this is not. So um, how can we define spirituality? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> if I connect the word spirituality back to spirit, then that gives me a very clear guideline. And so for me, spirituality means coming to a different consciousness about my own identity, which isn't just my physical identity, but it's related to the identity of the inner being, that being that is not visible. So that's one part. Another part of spirituality is being able to answer the eternal questions that all human beings have about life and beyond life. Is there a creator? If so, how does that creator have a relationship with us? Is there a relationship with us or there isn't? And the third question that spirituality answers is, well, what is the purpose of this planet and why am I here on this planet? And what am I supposed to be doing here? What is the purpose of life? And so spirituality answers my personal questions, but spirituality also answers the questions I have about the bigger picture about the world around me. And so it's a fascinating subject. And of course, it definitely brings about a different attitude, a different awareness, so that then my vision towards people my attitude towards life and the world around me changes for the better so that my contribution to the world can be a positive one, a creative one that can perhaps move us towards solutions. Sounds great. And especially sounds great that uh, we can have our own internal answers. So because there are so many people um, moving around asking for advice and there are so many um, life coaches and <laughs> courses and still people don't feel stable still they look for advice for more, more advice there are so many books and um, uh, courses even in, on the internet so 
That's a great idea that every human being um, can have its own uh, life um, advice, life coach. Yeah, so how can we do that? How can we connect to this uh, inner um, spirit? It was very fascinating for me to know that I have a compass within myself that can point me in the right direction. And I can also have a personal guide and coach. Um, people pay a lot of money to have personal coaches. And this one is absolutely just my honesty with the creator. I don't need any money for this. And the way that I understand it today is that my own conscience is actually the compass and my coach that can guide me in the right direction. But our conscience has become influenced by so many different layers and has become quite polluted so that it's not very functional at the moment. It's rather dysfunctional uh, in the sense that my conscience is not clear. I don't know what is right. I don't know what is wrong. I need a lot of advice from outside. But even at the moment where my conscience is clear and tells me very clearly, I must not do this or this, what happens next? The power of the mind and my thoughts is so strong, my feelings and my emotions take over and I don't listen to my conscience. And I'm not able to follow through what my compass is telling me, what my inner coach is telling me. And so, of course, I fall into a trap. And so, spirituality means the awakening of the conscience. So that the awakening is that I come to the awareness of the inner being. And then through silence, through meditation, the connection with the creator, I'm able to have power and purity so that my conscience is then able to become strong and guide me in the right direction. And of course, meditation also means that connecting with the one means that I receive not only that purity and love, but also I'm able to understand more how to follow through God's directions for our lives in, in a practical way. Whether it's the Ten Commandments that we've been told about, whether it's the a middle way, the path of balance that Buddha has described, or whether it's the instructions to Manu given to us in the Hindu scriptures, or the knowledge given to Arjuna in the Gita. All these are universal truths, but we're not following them. And so God has shared wisdom and truth through all the prophets in terms of the instructions for our life, but very often today, we ignore God or we say, well, this was then, it's not for today. But in fact, the truth is a truth, irrelevant of the changing times. And so what happens with spirituality is that I understand what it is that God's directions are for me in my life. And meditation and silence means that I have the capacity, the inner will, the power to be able to not get into a state of fluctuation because my thoughts are fluctuating or my feelings and emotions are going wild. But there's a stable force of power that's able to guide me in my life now. And so, yes, because we lack that understanding both of the self and also of the connection with the Creator, we are looking in books, we are looking here and there, we are getting into superstition, we are getting into rituals, but also we are finding human beings who we think can guide us. But every human being is searching themselves and so they cannot guide us. That just sounds amazing because everyone is looking for power because we, we need to do something, we need to create something. And you've just made uh, this... Uh, 
very powerful statement that we've got all the powers within or at least we can get it within not from out the world by doing some rituals or <laughs> doing some practices yeah. but mm -hmm. just uh, uh, through this very powerful connection and uh, another thing which I would like to ask actually is that people get confused they think that meditation is something about relaxation mm. So there's a very big confusion in their minds and uh, they take it like a spiritual spa. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think uh, this has nothing to do with that. Can you uh, clarify it a little bit? So uh, saying and proving that meditation actually gives you really internal power to create more external things. Mm -hmm. Well, one benefit of the conditions of today's world is that people are so stressed that they're looking for something that can give them relaxation. And in fact, meditation does bring relaxation because um, when you relax the mind, you learn to deal with your thoughts, then the stress that you're carrying inside gets resolved. And so that relaxation within the mind has an immediate impact on the physiology also. And so the body begins to relax, but that's not the purpose of meditation. You can go have a spa and have a good holiday and that's different. But meditation is really the discovery of what's going on inside my own inner world and being able to channel my thoughts in a direction of my choice so that I can be uplifted and I can receive power from the divine. So it's a change of direction. Instead of letting my mind go in a thousand directions out there, to turn my mind inwards, to learn to focus my thoughts, to be able to use my mind in a very powerful way, in a very concentrated, focused way, to connect with the Supreme. And when I'm able to connect with the Supreme, I receive love and purity and peace and power. I also receive happiness and the desires finish and the mind relaxes and yes, the body relaxes also. But more than that, after the meditation, I'm a changed person. Even a few minutes of meditation every day are able to generate positive feelings and positive emotions. One of the things that the New York Times published recently was a whole area of research into language. And what they found was that spirituality and the word God have been moving out of our vocabulary, at least in the Western world. I think India is sacred and special and so God still has a place in everybody's hearts and lives here. But certainly in the Western world, they found that certainly within the last 50 years, we use the word God only, only rarely in our language. And connected with that, even spiritual words that are connected with the inner values of the human being, words like respect, um, love, compassion, patience. When do we use these words in our language? Very, very rarely. And so the discovery of spirituality and the power of silence and the power of meditation allows me to experience the reality of the treasures I carry within myself. And through that experience, I'm willing to share these qualities, but more through maybe my life, through my behavior, but also at some point, maybe to bring these words back into our language and start adjusting the culture in which we live, which has become a very materialistic culture. And so the hope is that as one person changes, they have an impact on how many people is each one in contact with, maybe to the space of one day, some people meet 10 people, some people meet a 1,000 people, some even more. And so wherever it is I live and work, my transformation is going to impact all those around me. 
That sounds very, very powerful. So you just need uh, to make one effort, one step, just to be that modular of example. But um, to support uh, such stars who would listen to us and decide, okay, so I'm going to be that one, <laughs> that unique. <clears throat> so um, they're going to face uh, something <laughs> from the outer world. How can we support uh, their courage and their enthusiasm and uh, so they will carry on and not stop? Um. I'd like to share this very inspirational story I heard. It's a real story. Um, there was a group of people, high-level leaders in Harvard, and what they were doing was playing games. The games had a purpose. And one game that they were asked to be in was a group of five at each table. And they were given a pot of money, and they were asked to make a city, create a city. And within the pot... Um, there was supposed to be a certain amount contributed by each one for the common good, the general good. And what they found was that generally everybody around the table gave more or less the same amount. And they decided to plant an actor. The actor sat at that table and the instruction he had been given was, you have to give a big amount for the general good. He did this. The other four people were inspired. And then when it was time to ch change tables, they did that. Now, each one of the others did the same. They gave a big amount for the pot for the general good. And those people were inspired. And they went on to do the same. Which meant that finally, that actor had impacted not just the few people around his table, 125 people, which means that if today I begin to connect with the love inside my own inner being and I express that love in the form of kindness in some way or another, that act of kindness is going to impact 125. And so it's not so difficult to change the world. And so spirituality means transformation myself, but it also means a bigger impact on the world around me. So I hope that people who see this will be inspired to be a little bit more generous. Money is one thing, but to think about, can I give my time? Can I give a few kind words to somebody? Can I just give a smile to people I meet on the street? Is there some little act of goodness, of kindness and compassion that I can share with others? And it's going to be a big contribution to the world. It's so touching. You just made my heart so big <laughs> that I just want to jump out of this, of this studio and share this happiness and light and joy to the people in the street. So I hope um, we, uh, with our program we will have the same impact on the people who are watching us. So we need just um, one but very strong actor <laughs> in our family in our school, in our university, so in any environment. And don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> That's right. I think this is again a factor that when I begin my spiritual journey, because maybe the members of my immediate family are not interested. And what I have to remember is that they're waiting to see what changes I am making in my life. Some changes might scare them, like if I decide I'm going to have plant-based diet, that might be a bit scary for them. But if as a result of that, I become a kinder person, now they're watching that, they know me very well, they're not going to listen to what I say, but they're watching and they're observing. And so when they see positive transformation in my life, a little bit more kindness, a little bit more love, a little bit more attention, um, all the things that they want to see in themselves also, but they see it in me happening in a very natural way, well, that will be a great inspiration for them. And then, even though they might not say, yes, I want to be like you, 
maybe they do, they don't but at least they will then support my journey and they'll say it's wonderful carry on you have our good wishes you have our support what a nice picture what a happy world we are going to have <laughs> just start uh, this journey from yourself um you know they have the story about this little boy who is bothering his father who is sitting at a computer trying to get some work done and the child kept coming and the father then finally said okay i'm going to give you something and the idea was to keep him very occupied and so he gave him a jigsaw puzzle with the map of the world and he said put this map of the world together and he thought the child would take a long time but within a very short time the child had done the work and within a few minutes and so the father was amazed and then he realized something that on the other side was a picture of the human being and so it was very easy to put together the human being but the reverse was that the world was put right also and so as we change the world is transformed it's a message the brahma kumaris have had for a long time when i change the world will change also and so what you said is absolutely correct we want to have a better world but we forget that we have to be the change that we would like to see happen in the world um, we are the world <laughs> we, we are, are the, world. the children <laughs> we are in fact yeah so the world is built on us and from us that it's not something external it's not something you know, we can draw oh it's not something we can create uh, separately but it's just something uh, very much inside us there's a, a lovely expression and i'll share the hindi and then i'll translate it and it goes something like this smriti vritti drishti kriti sanskriti srishti and so the translation of that my awareness leads to my attitude that leads to the vision that i have that leads to my actions that leads to the culture that we create and that then creates the world and so from individual awareness and consciousness there's an impact that reaches out to transform the world and you don't need a huge majority to change the world margaret mead the social scientist had said many many years ago if you think about all the important changes that have happened in humanity through history you'll find that it start change starts with one individual and a small group of committed individuals coming together are able to transform the world because that little group is able to create a momentum that reaches a point of critical mass and after that it's no more a minority idea it's an idea that's accepted by the majority and so yes spirituality is definitely something that people are beginning to appreciate and yes many people in the world still don't know the word or reject the word but the change is slowly slowly happening and so now certainly in india there's a huge momentum to understand what is spirituality but across the world also little groups small groups of individuals but even in the un now they're talking about the spiritual aspects of transformation because when they're talking about the sustainable development goals they're actually connecting them with transformation so what is transformation how does transformation happen they haven't defined that but now within un circles certainly in some places they are asking the question what is transformation and they beginning to understand that transformation needs the spiritual dimension and when you understand the spiritual dimension you are able to bring about change within and change without i wish this program light of knowledge will be just uh, this light of spirituality and light of wisdom and in light all the society with all this uh, uh, inner power and inner light so thank you didi very much for you know, such a very uh, flying inspiration 
and for your words of wisdom. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to be here with you. Om Shanti. It's been a very inspiring talk about uh, adjusting and bringing spirituality in our mind, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our every single action. And how to be uh, a human being every minute of our life. Thank you for being with us. Uh, let me invite you to the next episode of Light of Knowledge.